Hi, my name is Terry Duran and I'm a nurse practitioner. And today we're going to talk about adaptive equipment. The objectives of this course are to develop a knowledge and understanding of common adaptive equipment used in the long term setting and to develop a general understanding of how to care and maintain commonly used adaptive equipment. As a disclaimer, this is not a teaching on proper usage of this equipment because incorrect usage of some of the mentioned equipment can result in injury or even death. And staff should always be trained according to the manufacturer's instructions, especially when we get to the parts on wheelchairs or lifts. So let's look at the definition. Now, adaptive equipment encompasses products and devices designed to help people with disabilities and of course our elderly perform the tasks of daily living and allow them to live and function independently. And these products range in complexity from simple silverware with grippy handles to very advanced communicative technology. So it is a definition that encompasses a very large range of products. But in the long-term care setting, what are the main purposes of adaptive equipment? The main purposes are to assist residents with the activities of daily living. These are activities that we perform normally in our daily lives, like eating, bathing, dressing, transferring, toileting, walking, or simply moving around. According to the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, nearly 14% of adults 65 and older use some type of mobility device. And 40% of adults over the age of 80 use a wheelchair, a cane, or a walker. These are activities that most of us take for granted. But when we get older, many of us will need this adaptive equipment to help us be able to function in our daily lives. So obviously people in assisted living or in some type of long-term care facility, they're there because they need the extra help. So as people lose function, the need for adaptive equipment needs to be identified. Step one would be that someone needs to notice the need. And this need needs to be integrated into the care plan of the resident. Step two, a specialized assessment should be completed by a specialist if possible to identify the appropriate adaptive equipment for the resident. Ideally, this would be a physical or occupational therapist. Step three, the proper equipment is ordered or obtained. And step four, all the staff and caregivers are trained by the specialist or the vendor on proper use, cleaning, and maintenance of the equipment. Now, depending upon what type of equipment, um, the staff should be trained and the staff should not use a piece of adaptive equipment if they do not know how to use it. So in these cases, what is the role of the support staff? Number one, they should receive training on the proper use of the equipment, and they should practice using it and be familiar with the equipment and the protocol for its use. Number two, they should encourage proper use and cleaning by the resident and the other support staff. When the staff is confident in how to use something, this helps build trust with the resident. And finally, don't use damaged equipment. Ask if there is an authorized backup equipment and continually report damage of adaptive equipment until it is fixed. Now, how is adaptive equipment paid for? Some government programs and other funding sources will help pay for some medical equipment. And this is also called durable medical equipment. Medicare, um, Medicaid, and particularly waiver programs will pay for a lot. Also private health insurance plans, public service organizations like United Way and Easter Seals. Also national family caregiver support programs the Department of Veterans Affairs, and also local centers for independent living. So whether it is family or staff recommending uh, adaptive equipment for the resident, there's some general principles to abide by. 
first, generally, it is best to pick the simplest product available to meet the need. Simpler devices are easier to use, less expensive, and easier to repair and maintain than more complex devices are. Second, focus on the actual tasks the resident needs to complete when choosing equipment. Third, ask the experts to provide who provide care for the Third, ask experts who provide care for the residents, like rehabilitation specialists, occupational therapists, and physical therapists about which type of technology might be best. Uh, number four, ask to use the device on a trial basis to see if it truly is going to meet the resident's needs if possible. And number four, ultimately, the resident's opinion about a certain piece of equipment is the most important. The device needs to be comfortable and simple to use. So each long-term care facility has its own adaptive equipment. Each facility has its unique needs and the type of equipment they have on site often depends on the needs of the residents. So in general, you can find all types of medical equipment on site. So this teaching is not intended to be comprehensive. It is a general teaching detailing the most common adaptive equipment that would be encountered in a long-term care setting. So physical and occupational therapy will outline specific individual needs for additional products in the resident's care plan. So this is just gonna be very general. And I'm kind of going to go from the small things to the large things. So the first piece of equipment we are going to talk about, and yes, this is considered adaptive equipment, is dentures. So yes, dentures or false teeth are prosthetic devices constructed to replace missing teeth. They are supported by the surrounding soft and hard tissues of the oral cavity. And of course, dentures are typically used for chewing. They provide a natural facial appearance and support for the lips and cheeks. They are also helpful for speaking, so they help people articulate and pronounce words. And of course, they improve self-esteem. Now, the dentist will tell the denture wearer how to care for the dentures and the necessary equipment needed, for example. They need a denture cleaning solution, a toothbrush, and an adhesive. And the dentist will also check to see if the dentures fit properly and if any uh, adjustments are needed. If the resident needs support to maintain his or her oral hygiene, the support staff is responsible for reporting it. And this information should be integrated into the resident's care plan. So these are general instructions for care of dentures. These can be given to the residents. These can be used by the support staff or in a residence, say with early dementia, these can even be put up in their room. So dentures should be removed and rinsed after eating, um, run water over the dentures to remove food debris and other loose particles. A towel should be placed on the counter or the sink and some water should be in the sink so the dentures won't break if they are dropped. Um, the mouth should be cleaned after removing the dentures so a soft bristled toothbrush can be used on the natural teeth and a gauze or a soft toothbrush can be used to clean the tongue, the cheeks and the roof of the mouth. Um, if used, any remaining denture adhesive should be removed from the gums. Um, the, the denture should be brushed at least daily. Um, remove and gently clean the dentures daily. Soak and brush them with a soft bristled brush and a non-abrasive denture cleanser to remove any food, plaque, or other deposits. If denture adhesive is used, the clean the grooves that fit against the gums to remove any remaining adhesive. Dentures should be soaked overnight. Most types of dentures need to stay moist to keep their shape. So the denture should be placed in water or a mild denture soaking solution overnight. Rinse dentures thoroughly before putting back in the mouth, especially if using a denture soaking solution. Sometimes these solutions contain harmful chemicals that can cause nausea, vomiting, or burns if swallowed. 
The second piece of adaptive equipment that we are going to talk about is eyeglasses. And the definition is vision eyewear consisting of glass or hard plastic lenses mounted in a frame that holds them in front of the person, person's eyes, typically utilizing a bridge over the nose and hinged arm, which rests over the ears. Glasses are typically used for vision correction. However, without the specialized lens, they are sometimes used for cosmetic purposes. So general instructions for care are to never place eyeglasses with the lenses down. Use a mini screwdriver to keep the screws tight. It's always good to keep a mini screwdriver around. Keep them in a case when not in use. You'll see a lot of residents try to clean them with facial tissue or uh, their shirts, but really they should never use paper towels, facial tissue, hand or face towels or a hem of a shirt as uh, the abrasive fibers can potentially scratch the lenses. Um, they should also use both hands when removing the frames because um, this prevents snagging and reduces the chance of breaking one of the sides. So again, care and cleaning will be a challenge for some of the dementia patients. So general instructions for cleaning are to wash hands with warm water and mild hand soap to avoid transferring dirt and other grime to the eyeglasses while cleaning them. Um, it's good to rinse eyeglasses with tap water and to use the right cleaner. So a spe special liquid cleaner specifically made for eyeglasses will help get the smudges off the lens or a formula can be made by mixing one part rubbing alcohol with one part water. Also, the right cloth should be used. A microfiber cloth or a lint-free towel works nicely to remove oily smudges because of the soft material and the tight weave of the fabric. The lenses or the glasses should be held correctly. The glasses should be held correctly. So when getting ready to clean eyeglasses, they should be held by the temple near the front of the frames to get a good grip without touching the lenses. Spray the front and back of the lenses. Gently wipe from one side to the other using a circular motion. Clean the nose pads, hinges, and frame arms with the lens cloth using more spray if necessary. Whenever possible, the resident should be taught how to properly care for them. If the resident needs support to maintain and care for their eyeglasses, the support staff is responsible for reporting it and this information should be integrated into the resident's care plan. The third piece of adaptive equipment we're gonna discuss is hearing aids. Hearing aids are sound amplifying devices designed to aid people who have a hearing impairment. Now, there are so many different types of hearing aids that it is very important to always refer to the user manual to keep the equipment in working order. Now, maintaining a hearing aid through daily cleaning and regular service is extremely important because proper care helps retain the optimum hearing conditions, extends the life of the hearing aid, and ensures proper hygiene. However, there are some general instructions for care. The hearing aid needs to be handled with care. Um, it's also important to change the hearing aid batteries often so they don't suddenly run out of power. Um, it also, the hearing aid batteries should be switched off when they're not in use. If the hearing aid battery is not used for a long period of time, then the battery can be removed. Change filters often so they don't collect wax or dirt. Residents shouldn't wear hearing aids in the shower or swimming or when using a hair dryer, hairspray, or any other types of spray. And the hearing aid should be stored in a safe place place. When not using hearing aids, they can be stored in a dry cloth, but they should always be transported in a storage case. General instructions for cleaning. After the hearing aids are removed, they should be cleaned with a soft dry cloth. They should be wiped. Check the hearing aid and the earpiece daily for earwax or moisture deposits and clean if necessary. Um, use a special brush for this purpose. Always clean the hearing aids from top to bottom to prevent earwax or dust particles from getting inside the hearing aids. 
if the volume of a hearing aid decreases, the earwax filter may be blocked. Either replace the earwax filter or consult a hearing care professional. Whenever possible, the resident should be taught how to properly care for their hearing aids. If the resident needs support to maintain and care for their hearing aids, the support staff is responsible for reporting it, and this information should be integrated into the resident's care plan. Now, there are many different types of mealtime utensils, and this picture is just a very simple example. There are adaptive plates, utensils, cups, etc. And these are basically used to help people with impaired upper extremity strength or neurological impairments to promote independent eating for as long as possible, assure maximum comfort and dignity during meals, maximize food intake for people who have difficulty eating independently, um, and also instructions for use may be in the occupational therapy or speech therapy evaluation. Now, as far as, because there's so many, of course, the general instructions for care are very general, um, but the equipment should always be properly cleaned, dried, and stored in a cool, dry place. If any crack is noticed in the equipment, it, of course, should be replaced. Replacement rubber handle used on the built-up utensils should be purchased at a medical supply store or on the internet. General cleaning instructions involved um, using warm, sudsy water and appropriate dish detergent. Equipment can also be sanitized in a dishwasher and should be cleaned after every use. Now, whenever possible, the person who uses the equipment could be, should be responsible for cleaning with or without support. If the person needs help, a caregiver, a family member, or support staff is responsible for sanitizing the equipment, and this information should be integrated into the resident's care plan. Most long-term care facilities are very well equipped with grab bars and handrails that are permanently installed in the walls um, for toilet and shower and tub transfers. They're, they're on the walls. Now, most grab bars are made of stainless steel, and stainless steel is most notable for its durability, its resilience against wear and tear, its invulnerability to brittleness, corrosion, and rust. However, there is grab bar safety, and periodically the bars need to be tested for holding power. So however they do it, the maintenance professionals at the facility need to be checking this. Safely, of course. Um, the basic instructions for cleaning, um, the grab bars really should only be cleaned with a simple soap and water mixture. This together with a glass cleaner will give the bar shine without affecting the structural integrity. Strong detergents, bleaches, and mineral acid can cause corrosion to the stainless steel. Do not use abrasive wiping or steel scrubs. They are not necessarily for the grab bars, especially the toilet grab bars. Their coarse consistency can gash or even scratch the bars. Um, also, wipe grab bars dry along with the wall that they are fixed on because water droplets that aren't wiped off can turn into water stains on the bars. The next piece of adaptive equipment that we're gonna be talking about are bedside commodes. And the bedside commodes can also be pushed um, to the toilet. So this kind of covers the raised toilet seats too. Now a bedside commode is a movable toilet that doesn't use running water. And it looks like a chair with a toilet seat and has a bucket or container underneath. This container can be moved for cleaning after the commode is used. A commode can be used beside the bed if a resident cannot get to the bathroom. The commode may have wheels that can be locked so that it can be rolled away when it is not needed. General instructions are to put the commode beside the resident's bed, make sure that the container is under the seat, put a small amount of water in the container before it's used because it'll make it easier to clean, but it'll also make it not smell as much. Fasten the seatbelt around the person if one is available and only if it's needed for safety reasons. 
Let the person safely sit on the commode and leave them alone if it is safe to do so and leave the um, button or a bell close by so that they can ring when they're done. As far as cleaning the commode, when the person is done, put on a pair of disposable gloves, help the person to stand. If the person needs help cleaning themselves, first wipe their bottom using toilet paper and then wash their bottom using a washcloth using soap and warm water. Gentle towel dry. If the person is able to clean themselves, then help them wash and dry their hands and help them back to bed. Remove the container and take it to the bathroom. Put the toilet seat up and empty the container into the toilet and clean the container with a toilet brush, a germ killing cleanser and water. Rinse well and put the container back under the commode remove your gloves and throw them away. A shower chair is a piece of adaptive equipment that allows people with limited mobility or impaired balance to bathe more safely in a walk-in shower or a bathtub. The person can sit down and shower, which is optimal for people with poor balance, generalized weakness, poor endurance, or various other medical diagnoses that affect endurance. Instructions for use are generally found in the instructional manual that comes with the chair. A formal training session should be completed by the caregiver or staff members who will be assisting the person to use the shower chair. General instructions is that the shower chair is easily maintained if properly cleaned and dried to prevent mold and mildew. Check monthly for signs of cracks or bending. The rubber stoppers often found on the legs to prevent the chair from shifting or moving may need replacement. Refer to the owner's manual for information on replacement parts. Parts may also be available at local medical supply stores as well as on uh, medical supply companies on the internet. If the shower chair becomes unstable or if parts shift when somebody sits on the chair, the screws and bolts may need to be tightened. The shower chair is only to be used during bathing. If the shower chair is equipped with wheels, it should not be used to transport the individual from room to room. The shower chair is not designed as a mobile unit. General instructions for cleaning is that shower chairs can be easily cleaned. Most shower chairs are constructed from a durable plastic, which are intended to withstand water, heat, and moisture. For daily use, the shower chair could be completely dry using a towel or a cloth after each use, being careful to dry underneath the chair. If the chair is used by one person, it is safe to thoroughly clean the chair twice monthly using a cleanser that will prevent mold and mildew. So you can use a tile cleaner um, or a solution of ammonia and water, but all solutions should be properly labeled and safely stored. Use a scrub brush to get between small spaces and hard to reach areas and always thoroughly rinse the chair with warm water after cleaning to avoid skin irritation and completely dry the chair to prevent mold, bacteria, and fungus. If the chair is shared by more than one person, then the chair must be cleaned after each use. The support staff member who provides care is responsible for cleaning. The agency may assign a single person for monthly cleaning and maintenance, but the general rule is if you see cleaning is required, clean it following the procedure outlined above. It is not recommended to store the shower chair in the shower, but sometimes this is not practical. If it cannot be properly stored elsewhere, it may stay in the shower as long as it has been completely dried. The next piece of adaptive equipment is the cane. And there are many different types of canes also, but this, in general, this is a device used primarily to aid walking, provide postural stability or support, or assist in maintaining good posture. Now, general instructions are to have proper positioning. So when standing up straight, the top of the cane should be reached to the crease in the wrist. The elbow should be slightly bent when the resident holds the cane. 
hold the cane in the hand opposite the side that needs support. For example, if the right leg is injured, the resident should hold the cane in the left hand. As far as walking, to start, set the cane about one small stride ahead and step off on the injured leg. Finish the step with a good leg. To climb stairs, place the cane in the hand opposite of the injured leg. With the free hand, grasp the handrail. Step up on the good leg first, first, then step up on the injured leg. To come down the stairs, put the cane on the step first, then the injured leg, and then finally the good leg, which carries the body weight. General instructions for cleaning and maintenance. Use a mild soap and a soft, damp cloth to clean the entire surface of the cane as needed and at least once a week. Ensure that all caps are firmly attached to the bottom of the cane and that there are no cracks in the cane. Whenever possible, the person using the cane should be taught how and supported to clean the cane. If this is not possible, the direct support professional should clean the cane whenever necessary and at least once a week. Like, likewise, the cane should be inspected at least once a week to note it to know any cracks, bends, or problems with the rubber fittings. Cane should be stored in an upright position next to the resident's bed if they need to use it in the middle of the night. If an individual does not need the cane in the middle of the night, the cane should be stored in the closet. A cane should never be stored lying on the floor as this could cause someone to fall and injure themselves. Now again, let's look at walkers. And again, walkers are used, again, there's all kinds of different types of walkers, but in general, they are used to provide enhanced mobility and stability for people with difficulty walking, impaired balance, and poor endurance. The use of an ambulatory aid helps the person to maintain functional independence and safety when performing mobility tasks. A rolling walker allows the person to push the walker as they ambulate, as opposed to a standard walker, which would require one to lift the walker with each step. The rolling walker is ideal for someone with poor endurance or generalized weakness. A physical therapist will recommend a walker for a person based upon the therapist's recommendation of their mobility, strength, weight-bearing status, endurance, lifestyle, and safety. When recommending a walker, the therapist must consider the person's height and weight in order to prescribe the correct size walker. So as far as general cleaning and maintenance, the walker should be examined monthly for wear and tear or damage. Replace and tighten any missing or loose screws or bolts. The rubber tips should be clean and even. If they become soiled or worn down, replace the rubber pieces with new ones of, a, of the appropriate size. A lubricant can be used on wheels that no longer roll smoothly, but if this doesn't improve performance or the wheels have sustained other damage, they should be replaced. It is recommended to wipe down the walker with an antibacterial cleanser or Lysol or Clorox wipes. Once the walker has been cleaned, allow the walker to completely dry. If the walker gets wet, be sure to dry it off completely with a towel to reduce the incidence of rusting. The walker should be thoroughly cleaned weekly and more often if the walker is soiled. Cleaning should be done by someone who can safely bend and lift the walker to ensure a thorough cleaning. A caregiver, the person who uses the walker, or a direct care professional would all be appropriate persons assigned to clean the walker. Walkers can be folded and stored in a closet or up against a wall. They are lightweight and can be easily stored in a car or a van. It is important that the walker be within reach and sight and easily accessed by the person who uses the device to reduce the incidence of attempts to ambulate without the device. Wheelchairs. Wheelchairs allow people to be mobile and active and to sit up and engage in activities during meals. Proper position also helps to maintain skin integrity. Instructions for use are usually in the physical therapy evaluation. Make sure you are referencing the most current assessment. General instructions. 
If a wheelchair breaks down, it can be an inconvenience, a hardship, and may even put someone in danger. The life of a chair will be maximized by taking care of problems before the chair is put out of commission. The user of the chair and those people who provide everyday support will usually be the first people to notice when the chair is not functioning properly. A routine should be established that can be followed by the resident, support staff, family members, or other caregivers to monitor the chair for problems. The routine should include basic daily and weekly cleaning and upkeep. To keep equipment running smoothly, minor problems need to be taken care of as well as having the vendor take care of major repairs. Know the equipment and be organized. So hopefully there's an owner's manual that can be referred to um, that tells how to care for the wheelchair. And hopefully the long-term care facility has a set of tools available on hand for maintenance and emergencies. General maintenance and cleaning. Check the frame for any cracks or breaks in the metal. Any potential problems need to be reported to the wheelchair vendor for repairs. The upholstery should also be monitored for cracks or tears where the fabric folds or there are screws through the fabric. Any problems related to the fabric wear will need to be taken care of by the vendor. If a seat cushion is used, check whether it is still providing the padding and support that the user needs. Check all nuts and bolts to the chair to verify that they are tightened. If any parts need to be replaced, be sure that the parts match those that were supplied by the manufacturer and vendor. Check that all parts that fold, swivel, pivot, and are removable do so easily. The wheelchair lock needs to be checked to make sure that it engages and releases properly and does not rub against the tire. Also, the casters can present a safety hazard when they are worn out. Check casters for cracks and the spokes that may eventually cause the caster to collapse. To keep the wheelchair clean, wipe down the surfaces with a damp cloth. Use a mild detergent or a stronger cleaner for stains and sticky spots. Manufacturers can often recommend using a car wax on the frame to make regular cleaning easier. Use a sharp tool or pick and carefully clean the wheel axle or caster, bearing any accumulation of hair, string, or other items that can interfere with rotation of the wheels. Overall cleaning should be completed at least monthly or and more frequently as needed. The agency may assign a single person for monthly cleaning and maintenance, but the general rule is if you see cleaning is required, clean it following the procedure outlined above. Mattresses play a critical role in residents with the appropriate comfort and support. The wrong mattress could cause discomfort, sleeplessness, unrest, and even injury. Therefore, it's very important to consider all the details, features, and options that the different mattresses offer. General instructions. Use a protective pad. A good quality waterproof pad is a must to keep the mattress fresh, dry, and free from stains. Don't jump or walk on or bend. Jumping or walking on a mattress or box spring can damage the interior construction and possibly cause injury. Most mattresses also have a weight limit. Bariatric versions are available generally for people weighing more than 300 pounds, so check with the vendor before purchase or rental as each mattress has different weight limits. General instructions for cleaning. Now methods for cleaning the mattress and mattress covers depend on the construction and materials used, so check with the manufacturer's manual for the recommended cleaning methods. Recommended current practice is to first clean the mattress surface in place with detergent and water, followed by rinsing. Then use a chemical disinfectant at a pH approved by the manufacturer for the appropriate contact time, also followed by rinsing. The last piece of adaptive equipment that we're gonna discuss in this teaching are resident lifts. Lifts are designed to lift or transfer residents from one place to another. Um, for example, from a bed to bath or a chair to a stretcher. Lifts may be operated using a power source or manually. The powered models generally require the use of a rechargeable battery 
and the manual models are operated using hydraulics. General instructions um, would be to ensure that the battery is charged for transfer, to test lift controls before bringing the lift to the patient, make sure the emergency release feature works, ensure that the receiving surface is stable and locked, ensure slings, hooks, chains, straps, and supports are available, appropriate and correctly sized, check lift and sling weight limits, ensure the resident's weight does not exceed the limits. This is very important. Now, as far as general maintenance and cleaning of the slings, do not share slings between residents unless slings are properly washed and disinfected. Disinfect slings after every use. Follow manufacturer sanitation and wash instructions. Remove metal or plastic reinforcements if required. Disinfect and scrub areas that contact the resident's skin. Air dry only, do not bleach, do not machine dry, and do not iron. Throw away used disposable slings and do not use slings that are frayed, ripped, or have holes. Always follow the manufacturer instructions to clean and disinfect the lift. But of course, it always needs to be cleaned before and after each resident use. Disinfect all lift surfaces and also wipe off traces of disinfectant. Clean the motor casings and the ceiling tracks if using an overhead lift. The reality of aging is challenging as one's health declines and the needs increase. Fortunately, there are so many adaptive products and safety devices that can be used to help make staying in a long-term care facility safer and of course more successful. As activities of daily living become more challenging, assistive devices may be used to extend a resident's independence and also improve their quality of life. The key for staff is to keep an eye out for a resident that may be struggling in a certain area. Identify that they may benefit from adaptive equipment and to act on that in a timely manner. Thank you so much for listening to this teaching. My name is Terry Duran, and now it's time to take your quiz.